Here's a FRQ that is comes from a non-calculator section, also coming from the same publisher as what does our weekly problems. And it's a good problem because it reviews area, it reviews volume, and it reviews cross-section volume. And it forces you to do a lot of stuff without your calculator. A lot of the parts as we kind of look through this is going to be a lot of setup, but don't integrate, uh, with the exception of part A. So you want to read over the question. Um, they give you the functions that cr that bound our region. So we have our function y equals sine of x, which is the curve function, and then our function y equals 1 half, which is our horizontal line, which creates a region that they're calling r. And so this question wants the area of r, the volume when we revolve r, and then a cross-section problem with it. Uh, we're going to go through each part one at a time, and you can do them one at a time, and then check your answers, or you can do it all at once, and then check your final answer through this whole video. But I am going to do one part part per slide. So we're going to start with part A. Part A is finding the area, which a lot of times area is the easiest thing to find, um, but actually this particular question, I have a feeling that part A was going to be worth the most amount of points because there's a lot that we have to do for the area that we don't really have to do for the other ones or we once we do it once, we don't have to do it again. So my belief is this part could uh, be worth either four or five of the nine points just coming from part A. So the first thing we need to do to figure out the area is we need to figure out where we should start and stop my integral. We to figure out our boundaries. And here's when not having a calculator access makes forces us to have a better idea of what happens with our unit circle. So I need to figure out when the trig function, so come back so you can take a look at the trig functions. My trig function was the sine of x and then y equals a half. I need to figure out when the sine of x equals a half. And here's where it really helps to know your unit circle. Now if you want, you could use triangles. I kind of, when I did this problem, when it came off to the side and I drew my 30, 60, 90 triangle, so here's pi over 6, across from that is 1, here's pi over 3, across from that is radical 3, and then my hypotenuse is 2, and try to figure out when would I end up with a half when I take the sine. And what you're going to get when you do opposite over hypotenuse is it's going to be the sine of pi over 6. So we know that x equals pi over 6 is my first intersection point, so that's this point right here. The second intersection point is going to come from the next quadrant. If you think about sine, we talked in class about figuring out what things are positive and what things are negative. All of the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. Sine is positive in the second quadrant. Uh, tangent is positive in the third, and co cosine is positive in the fourth. So that tells me I need a second quadrant angle that is equivalent to pi over 6, and that second quadrant angle would be 5 pi over 6. So the first challenging part of this problem is getting those boundaries correct. And what makes that so important is you're going to use those boundaries for the entire problem, not just part A. So you want to take some time, make sure you're working with the trig correctly. And you can kind of see, based on my scale, you know the intersection points are between 0 and pi. So you know that you're working in the first and the second quadrant. So for my area, my area is the integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 top minus bottom, so it's going to be the sine of x minus a half. So that's what the grader is going to be looking for, is when you set up your integral, you don't just want to write the answer of what you get after you integrate. You want to write your definite integral. Do you have the right boundaries, and do you have top minus bottom, the appropriate functions? Now, at this point, since you can't use your calculator, you have to integrate by hand and plug your boundaries in by hand. So the integral of sine is negative cosine, and the integral of a half is a half x, so minus one half x going from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Putting my boundaries in, I get negative cosine of 5 pi over 6 uh, minus 1 half of 5 pi over 6 actually gives us 5 pi over 12 when I take half of 5 pi over 6. And then minus a minus is going to give me positive cosine of pi over 6. And then minus another minus is going to give me positive half of pi over 6 is going to be pi over 12. At that point, we do need to combine. You don't want to leave things like this if it's things that you can figure out from your basic unit circle. Uh, I'm going to start with the cosine of pi over 6 because my triangle is already up on the, on the screen. Cosine of pi over 6, when I use my triangle or the unit circle, uh, it would be adjacent over hypotenuse. I get radical 3 over 2. 5 pi over 6, I'm going to get the same thing, but I'm going to get a negative answer because in the second quadrant, cosine is negative. The only one that is positive is sine. So I'm going to get negative radical 3 over 2, but it's already negative. The two negatives will cancel, so I get radical 3 over 2. I'm going to combine 
these together, I have minus uh, 5 pi over 12 plus 1 pi over 12 would give me minus 4 pi over 12. And then finally, I can do a little simplifying. Uh, I can add these together because they are both having the same denominator. So I get 2 radical 3 over 2. The 2's will cancel. And then I can reduce 4 12. I don't have to. I could still get full credit even if I don't reduce to be 1 third pi. So my final answer, and you could write in a lot of equivalent forms that weren't reduced, is radical 3 minus pi over 3. You do not have to take the time to reduce, but you do have to take the time to evaluate any of the trig pieces. So you cannot leave it as cosine pi over 6 or cosine 5 pi over 6 and get full credit. Because if it's something that can be figured out using your unit circle, it is not finished until you put those answers in. So looking at this, to me, if you get the boundaries right, there's a point right there. If you type, if you write top minus bottom, that is a point right there. If you integrate it correctly, that is a point. And if you get a final answer that is equivalent, that is a point. My only question is there may be a fifth point depending on how much work they expect right here with the plugging in of your values and simplifying it. So that's why I'm saying this section, this part A would be at least four points, but it could be five of the nine points. So you want to take your time with it and you want to make sure you have the right work moving forward to help you with the next part. Part B is a volume. It's a revolution volume. We're taking this region R and we're going to revolve it around the x-axis. The nice thing about that is we're working with x's so we don't have to refine the boundaries. We don't have to change any of the equations. So my integral is going to be pi, the integral from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, once again, what I found in A. For my volume, I am going to need to do the washer method because there is a hole. I have my big radius will be all the way out to my trig function. So my big radius will be the sine of x. That will need to be squared. And then my small radius is 1 half. That will need to be squared. So you can either write it as 1 half squared or you can write it as 1 fourth. And that is actually all you need to write with, um, with part B. You're, and so my belief is this is probably worth two points. You're showing that you have your radii identified correctly, that you remember to square them individually. Um, if you don't put a pi in front of that whole, whole integral piece, you will not get a full credit. If you have your boundaries off, you will not get full credit. So you want to look at the little details like that. Two points, potentially a third point. Just I'm not sure whether, uh, again, how many points they really are going to weight um, part A. What they might do, since your boundary point values are going to be the same in every single part, that might be one point all by itself. In A, B, and C, did you have the right boundaries? And then everything else, the rest of the integral and the rest of the work would be separate points. And then finally, part C is a cross-sectional volume. We are splitting it up, but we're slicing it into semicircles. So as soon as I see the word semicircle, I'm going to write pi over 8 so I don't forget. My boundaries are still going to be pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. That doesn't change. The side of my semicircle, or the diameter of my semicircle, I can draw right here on my picture, is going to be top minus bottom. So that's going to be the sine of x minus a half. And I have to remember to square that. You do not have to square it out. Just like on the last problem when it had 1 half squared, you do not have to square that out. But you do have to have the parentheses around it showing that you understand that you have to square that entire quantity. So this is another piece, probably worth two points. You're showing the understanding of how you find that diameter, that you square it, and that you have a pi over 8 out front. So this question, I think, is a great example of area volume, cross-sectional volume, because it also forces you to do trig and a lot of the methods that we learned in class. Hopefully this one will be a big help on the AP test.